too late. Again. How's today treating you? Fill her up. I only take cash. Cover the gas and some snacks. Coming right up. Be a hot one today. You ever hear of a place called the Dream Motel? Nope. Can't say I have. It's in the Hope Springs area? Yeah, I know Hope Springs. It's just about 50 miles down that ways. I've been too rich for the likes of me. <laughs> Three fifty for the gas, and one bag of chips, one crackers, one Danish, two bottles of water. It's uh, um, call it sixty dollars even. Just keep it, keep it. Take your wife out to dinner. Take my wife to dinner. <laughs> I ain't even married. Dr. Opine's office. You can wait inside. He'll be with you shortly. Good day. That's how he got out of here. He used that window. Uh, Dr. Opine? Detective Laney Buckham. Pleased to meet you. Please, take a seat. Thanks. Detective Buckham, I know from my sessions with John that you were his very good friend. So I thought I would reach out to you and let you have the opportunity to check things out first. I really appreciate that. Before I came inside, I had a really good look around outside. Things look good. Security seems tight. 
So, how did Johnny escape from here? Honestly, we've never had anyone escape from here before. There's Pratchett told me the exact same thing. Yeah. Fernwood is one of the most secure mental health treatment facilities in the country. Our security is top of the line. We have security officers who patrol the entire facility at all times of the day. Our camera points are dotted all over the facility, both inside and out. All motion detected and are monitored 24 seven and the whole facility is double fenced and patrolled. Why, why all of the security? Well, everyone in here is dangerous to an extent and that's why they're here. And we just have to make sure that they remain here until their mental health treatment is finished and they are deemed fit to re-enter society. I had no idea Johnny was in a place like this. Is this why I haven't been allowed to come visit him? Precisely. John was admitted here about five months ago and is getting the best of treatment, I can assure you. In fact, he's been the model patient, always willing to open up and work through his mental health issues in a timely manner. His desire has always been to be reinstated as a police officer, and honestly, he was well on his way to a full recovery. Then what happened this morning? You were his partner, were you not? I was. Three years. Then you know him to be a very smart man. Sounds like Johnny. Well, no amount of intelligence could account for John's escape from this facility. Why not? Because as I stated before, we are the most secure mental health facility in the country. Yeah, we've had a couple of attempted escapes, but no one's made it past the front door before. It's as if he knew exactly how to get out of here without being detected. And yet? All it took was for him to climb out this window. That's the funny thing. Go ahead and try to open the window. This is Dr. Opine, false alarm. I repeat, false alarm. All of our windows and doors have sensors built into them. So you open up a window and as you just found out, an alarm goes off. The only way to shut off the alarm is to call into the security system directly, which is voice recognition, as I have just done. Okay, so faulty wiring. We checked the entire system over after John escaped and everything's working properly. Detective Buckham, the door and window alarms are just the first line of security. After John got out the window, he would have had to bypass all of the external security cameras, all of which are motion sensing, and still get past the 12 foot high, double walled chain link fence that is patrolled by security professionals. So you see, Detective Buckham, John should never have been able to walk out of here like he did. Go left. Thank you, Lord. So, tell me something, Doc. Never understood. Why was Johnny sent here? John wasn't sent here. After his hearing, his family requested that he be admitted here. Now, not only are we the most secure mental health treatment facility in the country, we also happen to be one of the best. 
in the world. We have patients coming from all over the world to get their treatments here in this facility. So you see, John's family wanted him to have the very best treatment available. But why here? Johnny's not dangerous. Detective Buckham, do you not remember? Johnny was found in a drunken stupor in a bar with his weapon drawn playing a game of Russian roulette with a suspected drug dealer. And all this was just one week after he almost beat another suspect to death. But until then, he'd never been violent. I, he's always preferred to use his head over a gun. Be that as it may. In the last few months, he's been having several violent episodes right here in this facility. Of course, it's probably due to the mental breakdown that he suffered when he failed to solve the murders of those four young women. Now, don't get me wrong. John is on his way making strides to a full and complete recovery. And then, of course, another issue has arisen. I, I, I don't even know how to begin, but... Well, now John hears the voice of God. The voice of God? Yes. He has been having vivid nightmares that God has been speaking to him. And just in the last couple of weeks, now he claims that he hears God in his waking hours too. Now, in my professional experience, violent outbursts coupled with hearing voices can only lead to one thing, trouble. So we need to find John, and we need to find him now. What was Johnny doing with all this? Part of John's healing process was regression. Focusing on what happened in the past that caused his breakdown. This included revisiting the very case that pushed him over the edge. I've seen all of this before. These were the poems that were sent directly at the precinct before each of the killings. Johnny and I were the ones assigned to the case, and you know, Johnny was actually the one who came up with the nickname for the killer, the poet. He spent so much time studying these three poems. Eventually he found a pattern, a, a code written into each of the poems that gave him the when and the where of the killings. By the time we got the fourth poem, he was so sure that by cracking the code in these three poems, we were gonna be able to save the fourth victim. But uh, we were too late. One thing you could never figure out was the who. And that, coupled with the murder of those young women, well, let them straight here to you. You got a pencil? What, what is it? I think we just found our next one and where.
the Dream Motel, today, newest. What does it mean? I don't know. But if Johnny wrote this, and it does look like his handwriting, it's gotta mean something. You mind? Be my guest. Tell me something, Doc. How did Johnny get away from here? Foot? Car? By car. Uh, my car, to be exact. Before he jumped out that window, he broke into my desk, stole my car keys, and my wallet. Uh, he's good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. There's a few listings for the Dream Motel. Got two in California. One in Washington, two in New York, one in Bangladesh. Nothing is being listed as in the area. Wait. There's a mention of the Dream Motel in the Hope Springs area? Hope Springs. That's about 80 miles from here. Okay. There's a woman named Jennifer. Talks about it on her blog. She says, my life was forever changed at the Dream Motel in the Hope Springs area. An out of the way, almost inconspicuous place to rest one's head for the night. Sounds like I'm going to Hope Springs. Thank you, doctor. And I promise I will do my best to find Johnny and return him safely back into your care. Welcome to the Dream Motel. My name's Jesse. How can I help you? I, um, need a room, I think. You think you need a room? Yeah, yeah, I need a room. Um, just for the night. Okay. Well, you are in luck. We have been extremely busy lately, but we have one room left. You want to know a secret? It's the best room in a motel, if I do say so myself. Room 147. Um... That won't be necessary right now. We'll take care of that later. Besides, I need to go check and see if your room's ready. If you'll just have a seat in the lobby, I'll be right back. Turns out we are completely ready for you. Like I said, it's room 147. If you'll just take a right at the end of the desk and go to the end of the hall, you'll find your room. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. The local AV club has got a seminar running on sound on film and they're using our motel. I think they still have a lot to learn. <laughs> anyway, my name is Jesse. I run the Dream Motel. How can I help you? Uh, yes, I have a room booked in the name of Weston. Robert Weston. Robert Weston. Yes. Hey Frank, it's Lainey. Yeah, Johnny's all right. He's just gone AWOL. Hey, do me a favor. Run those poems through the computer again. Yeah, I mean, I know we've done it a bunch of times already, but if you love me, you'll humor me. Try cross-referencing the poems with the words dream, motel, 
and today. I mean, you know, something might actually turn up. I don't know what we're looking for, but it looks like Johnny may have a new lead in the case. Hey, and one more thing. Try running the word newest through the computer. Yeah. Let me know if you find anything. I'm headed out to this place called the Dream Motel in the Hope Springs area. I don't know. Hopefully everything's going to make sense when I get there. Thanks. Huh? Why can't I see what it is you're trying to tell me? Keep looking. You're close. You're close to what? Another killing? I can't do this again. Not yet. Not, not now. Help me, please. Help me! Please. Please don't let this end like the others. You need gas, lady? Nah, I'm looking for someone. Would have passed through here this morning, man, mid-thirties. Uh, ain't sure I seen him. Driving a black SUV around 9, 10 a.m. Oh, let me think a minute. I only had one other person stop today. Now that you mention it, I think he was driving that car. Said something about going to the Hope Springs area, looking for a place called... The, the, the Dream Hotel? Yeah, I think that's it. He was a good tipper. This the right road for Hope Springs? Yeah, just keep on going down that road. Not sure where that dream motel is though. Like I told your friend, I never heard of that place before. It's all right, as long as I'm on the right road, I'm sure I can find it. Oh, um, thanks. Well, thank you, lady. But your friend was a better tipper. So I've been through all the names in the register and there's nothing. Everyone checks out. So, I don't get it. You lead me here and you leave me with nothing. I don't, I don't get it. Dream Motel. Well, I'm here, unless there's another Dream Motel in the area. There's not. I've checked. It's the only one in the state. So, today. There's nothing. That's, that's nothing. There's nothing there. Newest, newest. What's newest? Huh? What's newest supposed to be? What? what? Andrew, sure about this? 
I'm as sure as we can be. When I put the word newest into the computer, the only six-letter word it churned out was tweens. I cross-referenced this, but nothing. Unless you're looking for an 11 or 12-year-old, this has nothing to do with the case. A dead end. But then I cross-referenced the word newest with the case file, and there it was. The possible name of the poet. Weston. Robert Weston. Robert Weston's a professor at Lambden College. All four victims went to Lambden. That's right. Why didn't we catch this? We never even suspected him. There he was this entire time. gotta be here. You looking for this? Weston, 107. Where is it? Uh, it's this way. I'll, I can take it. Room 107. Open it. I can't do that. There may be a killer in there. Open the door. I'm, I'm sorry, it won't open. We missed him. Wait, Weston. I saw him earlier in the lobby, had his bags with him, but I found it strange that he didn't check out. There's a possibility he just left. from Landon College. We need to talk. Come on. How did 
you know? How did you know I'd be here? Johnny, come on. You never hide anything from me. I'm impressed. You did the pencil thing. What can I say? You taught me well. It was all for nothing. All the clues that led us here. Weston got away. He's long gone by now. Dust in the wind. And if he knows, if he knows that we're on to him, we may never find him. Am I missing something? I just told you that Weston got away. No. You didn't. We got him. You did? Yep. As soon as I knew Weston may be your killer, I called ahead. Found out he checked in here earlier this afternoon. So, I called it in. Had roadblocks set up on all the roads leading in and out of here. He said he ran from here because he recognized you. And, you want to know the best part? Got a phone call about 10 minutes ago saying they just picked him up. Yeah. He's already confessed to everything. He even told the arresting officers how he was planning another murder. John, you did it. It's over. We did it, lady. A little help from above. Johnny, you know, I gotta take you back, right? Well, the madhouse. Yeah, I know. But you know what? What? For the first time in a really long time. I feel a sense of freedom. I know what you mean. Come on, we gotta go. Hey, Frank. Yeah, good news. We got Weston. Yeah, I got him too. I'm uh, gonna take him back to Fernwood. But I think we're gonna stop and grab some coffee first. Hey, do me a favor, call ahead, let him know. Be there in a couple hours. Thanks, Frank. Get here. Who? That guy from the hotel. John, there, there's no one there. Uh, him, right here. He's. She can't hear me, and she can't see me either. sound ungrateful since you know we, we, we got our guy today and all largely uh, thanks to you but why didn't you talk to me at the beginning of all this there there are, there are four young women that died that probably would probably still be alive if you had John I've been trying to reach you for a long time. But then, you got to relying on yourself. You started listening to your own wisdom. 
It took you hitting rock bottom before you ever got a deeper understanding and basically started listening again. So, so what are you like? Uh, like a figment of my imagination? Something made up by my, my broken mind? What? Oh, no. No, I'm not a figment of your imagination. I'm very real, John. This place is very real. My love for humanity is very real. And as long as you keep listening, I'll guide you. Who's going to listen to me? Hasn't this worked out? Did they not listen? Yeah, they did. Thank you. Hey. Look, I'm glad we got Wes in at all. You know, one less criminal out there running around. But I, I gotta know, how, how did you know? What clues led you to this motel today? And how did you come up with newest? And how on earth did you escape Fernwood in the first place? The voice spoke to me in my dreams last night. Yeah. And when I woke up, to get out of Fernwood, and I knew where to go and when. And newest? Yeah. I guess I got the name mixed up. You know how it is with dreams. Well, this is going to make for some real interesting reading in my report. Come on, let's get out of here.